We're heading out of Minka today and down to the beach. We just saw all of our clothes being dried outside, which I guess is more eco-friendly than being dried in a dryer, so I'm not mad about it. Look at all this laundry we did. <laughs> what? We're so clean now. Well, it's because of backpacking. Whenever we go backpacking, we get so dirty and sweaty. Also, this is the first laundry day in Colombia, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, now that I think about it. Yeah, I think that it is our first laundry day in Colombia. <laughs> yeah. So it was five huge bags. Less than $20 for 40 pounds or something of laundry. When you put it like that, it's a lot of laundry. Yeah. And then the best part is, is they did dry it outside, so it makes our clothes last go a little bit longer. We're here at the marina. So we met some people who were traveling around on a boat and they said we can come check out their boat because that's kind of my next life dream. I'm pretty excited. So here is Ben and Layla's Kairos. This boat started in Holland. It's been going two years now, 10 meter long. Let's check it out. Yo, Ben! Hello. <laughs> okay. And that's the anchor right there. Oh my yeah, god. So the anchor is 35 kilos and the anchor maximum 20 meters of water. A uh, meter of chain is like 2 kilos. Wow. So that's like another 40 kilos, so the 75 kilos you have to pull up by hand. And is that like with a, a anchor, yeah, with a, winch a winch, handle, yeah. get that mechanical advantage? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ben actually bought Kairos while he was on another continent, but his brother's a sailor and checked it out. Months after Ben's initial offer was rejected, he saw it was still available online, offered half of what he had before, and got a great deal on this boat. The hole's metal, which adds a lot of durability and peace of mind when crossing oceans. Ben and Leila always have three to four months of provisions on their boat. They told us it's important for many boat lifers to keep a lot of food on board in case they have to leave before restocking because of weather or sometimes bureaucratic reasons. Their fridge can also be turned into a freezer for extra food storage. Man, I love boat ovens. They can shift to compensate for the waves. Ben bought this one new after starting his journey. He said it was around a thousand euros. Yeah, I'm glad you got these uh, sunshades here. Yeah. It's hot today. So and uh, on the side we have our dinghy, which we normally use to go to shore, which is most of the time we don't stay in marinas. Oh, okay. So, and then inside we have another outboard motor. Down in here? Like, yeah, it's below you basically. Oh, okay. So, inside? Yeah, inside there. Cool. Uh, so this is all like storage and everything? Yeah, storage, but you reach from the inside. It's, oh. it's, it was a bed, like a one and a half person yeah, bed, but we uh, mm -hmm. kind of stuffed it up with like, like many different things. Nice, <laughs> like yeah. 50 liters of paint in there. And yeah, we got the outboard and we got tarpaulins and we got we got like seven or eight extra sails. Uh -huh. uh, so we keep a couple of them here. And these are 100 watt? 100 watt each, we have three of them. 300 watt. And they connect to uh, four ATM uh, batteries, uh -huh. glass batteries. This is totally breaking the news. Lead acid, you have the same kind of Yeah, we got the sealed lead acid. Yeah, yeah I kind of want the lithium one day, yeah. but they're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> How many amp hour batteries? 500 amps. Oh, wow, we only got 350. The but it's like a mechanical thing that yeah, it's like that, a linear drive on top of here which, which goes like this to, to steer the ball. Ah, oh, that's cool, Keep man. It straight because there's constant waves, so there's constant adjustment. When Whoa, it's always moving. I've, in my books, they have like a wind system or something. Yeah, we have that as well, which is hanging here in the back. The monitor, or but this is so much more comfortable. You press the button and, and you align it with your course on the chart like digitally as well because the other one if the wind changes then all yeah. of a sudden 
you're not yeah. going the right way. If you're sailing close to the shore, what's going to happen? You're going to hit to the beach. So every so hour... Speaking, and two hours later, wow, you're on the beach. So that's the, the wind one. That's the wind vane. And what do you call that? It's, this is an Irish wind vane. Wind vane, yeah. And so you've upgraded. Oh, okay. They're very expensive. They're 4,000 euros. I never Holy. used to. came with the boat, but I'm like... It's nice to have a backup. It's, it's for backup. If you're crossing the Atlantic, you know. You probably want to have a backup. I'm the backup. I'm going to use the backups for the backups. So. And this Always. is for cooking? This is the gas, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Normally cool. I keep two bottles or maybe three of these ones. Gallons. Four months or something. Wow. I yeah. used to keep two of them. It's just like it's like eight months, but <laughs> I was more careful. But. And this pipes through to up here where you yeah, cook? Yeah, and it goes to like a, there's a gas heating system, which is malfunctioning. I'm replacing it for a diesel heating system because we also want to go to cold places like you guys did. Yeah, we have the gasoline powered one. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, oh, gasoline. Oh, yeah, it's pretty wow. good. I think the diesel is uh, cheaper. Ben was telling me how for navigation, they use the AIS system yeah, and right. he can also set an alert. So at night they can sleep soundly and it'll let them know if there's a big boat coming in and you know, you can get some shut eye without being afraid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we have the marine radio. It's connected to the same antenna as the AIS and you can talk to other ships about like 50 kilometers of the e perp which is like a floating device. If it would sink, it would start floating and it would start activating and then the rescue service will be alerted with the GPS position. It's wild compared to a van, how many more safety features yeah, on a boat. A life raft, for example, which can carry four people and it has some, uh, some stuff, some food and stuff inside. Hanging out at the marina was super fun. We were able to meet other boat travelers and now we'll be dreaming of boat life someday. Thanks so much, Ben and Leela, for having us on the boat for the day. We found an eye overlander, La Casa del Agua, Purificada. And so these are, Danny said it's just about a dollar to fill up 20 liters or five gallons of water. So that's pretty sick. And compared to the last place we filled up water that took so long to just like fill up one gallon or a couple of liters, this one is done super duper fast. And I guess they're usually in these kind of gas stations. We were kind of struggling filling up at that little water purification site. So now it's nice to have a full tank of water. Try! We're going to play another game of Guess That Fruit. We got these at the supermarket in Colombia. We thought they looked kind of crazy. This one here they call Durazno Amarillo, which means yellow peach. That does not look like a peach, but it does look like a dragon fruit, which are my favorite. So that's what I'm really, really hoping for here. I'm hoping for a dragon fruit. This family. is definitely no Georgia peach. <laughs> yep. Let's see that. That is not a dragon fruit. <laughs> so I'll just try to cut off the outside parts. Oh, wow. Maybe it is a dragon fruit. It does look like a dragon fruit in oh, there. Oh, I am stoked. Okay, so, so you might be able to- it's a dragon fruit, I should just cut it in half. You could peel it out. Wow, yeah, it definitely looks like a dragon fruit. I'm, I'm so stoked to try this. The Rasno Amarillo. So I'm definitely going to be getting these all the time then because that is, I love dragon fruit. Okay, so here, let's see. Dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. That is straight up dragon fruit. I haven't seen a dragon fruit in so long. This is not what one looks like, right? That, no, dragon fruit are usually red. and they. But did the outside look kind of like this? I can't even remember Yeah, they right do, now. but usually they have like more longer with pointy edges. That's really good, huh? Yeah. And this other half? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that turned out pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, fruit number two. Whoa! That's what is that? Doesn't that look that, like maracuya? Yeah, but really different. Maracuya is another name for passion fruit. I think I'll go with the half. But maracuya usually... What? Yeah, maracuya 
usually feels like a piece of egg. Well, oh have, like, my a white god! Lining. But it does have a white lining a little yeah, bit. A little, a little bit of that sort of thing. So it does seem related, huh? This is maracuya. Okay, let's give it a taste. Very bitter. So does it's it? It's got seeds. I can hear mm -hmm. teeth. <laughs> yeah, I think this one probably better to make like a sauce out of something where you try to get those seeds out. Uh, you think you just swallow? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this one is called the Corumba. And yeah, it's pretty bitter. Um, it's it's really similar to passion fruit of maricuya. Really big seeds, weird white lining on the outside. Kind of like a pomegranate, but not shaped like a pomegranate at all. <laughs> so yeah. Not my fave. Not my fave. No, this is really bitter. Yeah. I'm They're sour. Yeah, yeah sour, yeah, sour. sour. I don't know, sour's kind of a nice thing sometimes, and this is not. <laughs> I don't know, you know, well, we'll see how they, how they make it. I bet with a lot of sugar. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this one, the last one. This is called tomate de arbol. So, tomato of tree. Tomato of the tree. But this one, I'm guessing that this is a granadilla or a maracuya or passion fruit in English because the shell this stick it looks a lot like a granadilla right Emily yeah I'd say I'd say another yeah maracuya it's got like a pretty hard shell yeah and the fact that we already had whoa hey. what? what is that I want to just take a bite out of it like it does look like a tomato though right oh my gosh it smells like a floral tomato it smells like maracuya <laughs> so we're getting some seed action here. Yeah. Take a little bite of it. Mmm. It's super good. It's kind of weird, but it's super good. Tomato. Mmm. It's like citrusy tomato. The consistency compared to that one though, at least these seeds you can just like chew right through. And it's kind of tomato-y, but like a citrusy tomato, right? Yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah, I've never seen this one in uh, Central America. One, the one that excites me the most is a new type of dragon fruit. We've also seen it called a pitaya. Wow, I'm so excited. I'm going to be eating so many Durazno Amarillos. If Danny ate all of the yeah. street tomatoes. Man, but we should buy like a million of these next time. Yeah. Oh, because the first dragon fruits we had were in Mexico? Mm -hmm. So the ones in Mexico had white on the inside. Kind of like these uh, Colombian dragon fruits. And then the dragon fruit in Costa Rica were red on the inside. They were so red. Like, we love dragon fruit. Yeah. But they were so red that even your pee would look oh, yeah, red. And that was a little bit it weird. Was scary. We would just get a bunch of dragon fruit and then, like, have two of them for breakfast. And then we would be peeing red all day. And we're like, <laughs> what is wrong with us? We're dying. Yeah, we had to give up those ones, but these ones are yeah. white. I'm stoked. And now, yeah, we can continue our dragon fruit addiction. <laughs> so that's it. Yep. This is our last day at the beach after a long, long time of sweating it out here. <laughs> yeah, it is so hot today. I really love it. I love that we're leaving it and we're going to the <laughs> mountains. <laughs> Let's go to the mountains. Ooh, we've been all Central America. Beach, 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 beach. I'm stoked for some cool weather. Oh, it's far though. We gotta drive today. Yeah. To get from here to Bucaramanga is 15 hours and 46 minutes. Oh my. So we're obviously not gonna make it today, but in the next wow. couple of days we'll make it there. We'll see you guys there. Yeah, up to the mountains of Colombia. All right, Grammy, you ready to go? You ready to go to the mountains, my boy? Got some good news. They yeah. said they confirmed that the road that we haven't been on is the quicker way to get up there. Oh, okay, cool. So that's cool because honestly, the main reason we came here was to see the mountains and it's been cloudy, but now we'll be circling around. Yeah, so we'll 
Hopefully, we'll definitely see them. Yeah. Hopefully, definitely. <laughs> Hopefully, definitely. I think we will, you know. And it's just like an island of mountains that's not connected to the Andes, so it'll be kind of fun to drive around the whole thing. It's the closest, tallest mountain range to the ocean ever in the world. I don't know how they calculate yeah, that. Yeah, everything is the most something. <laughs> Bit of a traffic jam here. Oh, it's a horse. There's a horse delivering your furniture. <laughs> wow, so we're going through this town, Rio Acha, and it's a big city. But when we initially asked for an ATM, the guy just said no. <laughs> <laughs> but we did find an ATM, and good thing we did because. Yeah, there's not a lot of ATMs in Colombia, so definitely every time you're around an ATM, you have to re-up a good amount. We do have the safe, so we're just, we're, we feel good about it. Yeah, and something else that's unexpectedly hard to find is a reliable gas station. You can see here this Ayatama Coop, but it might show up on Google as a Terpel or a Texaco because there's no high quality gas stations in this part of the country. You see people selling it in plastic bottles, which apparently are not good to buy gas out of because it degrades from the gasoline and the plastic. This part of the country is very deserty as well. If you continue on, you'll get to the most north point of South America, but you have to cross like 40 different roadblocks and give like a gift or money to all these roadblocks, like community Roblox. When we were grocery shopping after we got some money, we did see people with individually packed rice, but then they bought like a, like 50 of them. So I wonder if they're, we figured that they were going over to the desert and they were going to give out that rice. It's... You can also buy a ton of little bags of water to give out. But yeah, this part almost looks like Kenya to us. Like It's very, very deserty. Dry, but grasslands. And Tons of goats too, which yeah. was in Kenya as well. <laughs> Lots of goats in Kenya. Man, yeah, I could just see a giraffe walking by. Yeah, that was actually before Emily was vegan and everything, but we stayed with this tribe in Kenya, um, and they they took us six kilometers with a goat. The goat rode a motorcycle, <laughs> and then we ate every part of this goat. It was amazing. They had a bunch of locals there, you yeah. know, music. And we all spent the night around the fire on beds of herbs. Like sage. Wow. Yeah, we slept on the outside, which is really cool. And there was like, there was one guy stayed up all night, made sure that there was no big cats around because I guess close by someone got attacked by a jaguar. So wow. that was pretty crazy. Yeah, they even gave us some homebrew alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was really good. It was made with fermented honey. Honey, yeah. Honey with like aloe, it made in a gourd with honeycomb and even bees inside of it. <laughs> yeah, there were so, pieces in it. Yeah, so like you had to drink it through your teeth to try and not, and then like get the, the honeycomb and bee, bee parts out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I was actually there while they killed the goat and it was pretty gnarly, you know, coming yeah. from being so separate from those kind of things in our society. And they chose to actually suffocate the goat, right. which meant then you don't waste any blood. And they actually used the blood, they used every part of the goat. Yeah. And they said, oh yeah, if you want to drink some blood, you know, we can do it. We pictured it in like a cup, but yeah. no. It was like they cut here, pulled out the skin, and it filled full of blood, and you could lean over. <laughs> Emily said nah. I said no. Nah. Because of the Anthony Bourdain episode of when he was in... I don't know if he was in Kenya specifically. In Africa, for he sure. He was in Africa, and yeah, they like shot a cow in the in the throat, and then they had a cub, and they like drank the blood of the cow. Cauterized it. Yeah, and then they cauterized it with like thought it was yeah. So I figured that's kind of what we were going to be doing. The guy just like looks up at me, and he's just got blood all over his face, and he's like, "You want to try?" And I'm like, <laughs> "No, thank you though." <laughs> I tried it. It tasted like juiced steak. It was really good. 
But, you know, we don't eat much goat since then. <laughs> no, and right after that, we went to Masai Mara on a safari. And they had a lot of, like, Indian people coming, you know, doing tours and stuff. So there was, like, a lot of vegetarian and vegan food. And I didn't eat meat, like, the rest of the trip. Yeah, we're super close to Venezuela. This yeah. road has some pretty gnarly potholes. And we've been dodging, dodging, dodging. driving by is signs for Vino de Palma, which would be wine of palm. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to try it because honestly our stomachs are a little messed up from something else we eat, so maybe, maybe next time we'll be a little bit more adventurous for the local alcohol, but... Oh, we're also seeing a lot of signs for ACPM, which we learned is what they call diesel here. All right, we're making a stop here in Bayou de Par. We all need a little bit of time to stretch our legs. This toll booth is like completely burned out here. I don't know what the deal is. Estado narco parado. Oops. No peaton. And there were people over there on the side. Wow. It's all graffitied up. Crime. Narco state. to Bucaramanga. We're excited to start sharing our wanders in the Andes. If you like this video, let us know in the comments, like, and subscribe. See you next time.